Hey everyone, I'm Elmar of ElmarsGuides.com and with this video here I'm going to go over Siren's Grotto as an EverQuest farming location. So this is one of my favorite farming locations of all time because the amount of money that you're actually able to get from this location is astounding. It's one of the best farming locations for uh, people that are free to play because almost everything that you're going to be getting from this location is actual platinum and money it's not going to require you to run a trader or uh you know spend time trying to auction off your items in a uh, general chat or trade chat or anything like that uh you're going to be getting a lot of gems that you're going to be able to sell for just platinum at a vendor and you're also going to get uh be getting some items that of course you will be able to sell in the bazaar if you actually wanted to take time out of your day and uh you know set up a trader and or if you could even set up a trader in the first place now uh I'd like to say that I'm probably going to be making two or three videos about this location and each of them are going to be pretty much covering the farming aspects of this location. The reason I'm going to be making more than one video though is because it's going to be easier for free to play players in order to find that video because it's going to be aptly named in order to fit the criteria that they would be searching for. Because if I just make a, you know, a Siren's Grotto farming location video, it's not going to, uh, you know, it might a free-to-play player might not click the link or might not know that it's an amazing location for them. But if I make two videos and name the second one something that would be more appealing to a free-to-play player, obviously there's a higher chance that they will find it, they will click it, and uh, they will get the information that they seek versus having to sift through, you know, dozens and dozens of other things in order to find what they want and, you know, have to actually watch all of those videos and blah, 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 and the list goes on. So... To get started, I'd like to say that uh, you can get here via Cobalt Scar, which is a zone on Velius. Now, there's multiple ways you can get to this zone. The first is you can have a Druid port you here, which uh, the Druid will be able to do ring or uh, circle, rather, of Cobalt Scar. And then you'll be able to port here, swim across the ocean into the uh, Siren's Grotto, and you'll be able to start your farming exponential pretty much right away. Or, if you are part of a guild, you will be able to go to the guild hall, which is just off of the guild lobby, and in there you will be able to buy a stone from whatever that little gnome is named, I forget his name already, and uh, uh, it starts with a Z, I know that, and you'll be able to uh, turn in the Cobalt Scar gem right back to him, and then you'll be able to port out here, and you'll be able to, you know, start your farming after you swim across the sea, and pretty much, you know, all that fun stuff. Now, there is one thing that uh, you should be a little forewarned about swimming across the ocean. There is a, uh, uh, I can't remember the name of the mob out here, but it pretty much when he swims, he's in the shape of Fader, the continent, and uh, he will kill you if, you know, you're lower level or uh, if it's Fabled Month. Uh, if, and if he's Fabled, he probably will kill you even if you're higher level. So uh, that's definitely something you want to remember, keep in mind, and, uh, you know, definitely something to look out for. Uh However, I'm pretty sure he's used in a, or he, he drops like a cloak of flame or he drops something really good. So if you are able to kill him, say, you know, you're uh, like the same level my Beast Lord is, which is 93 in this video, you probably will be able to kill him. And uh, if you can, he might drop something that's worth it for you after all. So uh, as aforementioned, this is one of the best farming locations, in my opinion, in the game. Uh, and the reason for this is there's just so much here for you to farm and so much for you to actually get from this farming location. Uh, you can get tons of valuable gems that you're going to be able to sell to a vendor for a lot of platinum. And you're also going to be getting other stuff that you'll be able to keep and sell in the bazaar such as uh, deep water inks. Um, let me actually, I have a list here. You'll be getting uh, tons of cultural items, you know, ore and silk that you'll be able to keep. Although you'll want to discard... Um, what do you call it? Spinneret fluids and the other one is loam. You want to discard them because they're just not really worth anything around this level. So if you discard them and you keep stuff like the ores and silks, you're going to be making quite a bit of profit. Also, the pelts are good. You'll be getting stuff from here like flawed animal pelts and stuff like that that are also good for you to keep and then sell in the bazaar. So, uh... You're going to be getting a lot, those are the trade skill items that you're going to be getting a lot of. And you're going to want to put them on your trader. You won't want to just sell them to a, a vendor because they're not going to sell a lot to the vendor. And you're just going to be losing a lot of money versus if you actually, you know, listed them on your trader. You would make uh, pretty much quadruple the amount of money that a vendor would offer you. I'm um, pretty sure like the flawed animal pelts, you'll be able to get like a, maybe 5 to 25 plat depending on the current market value of them a piece. And um, that's actually a pretty decent amount. 
um, considering you're going to be getting quite a few of them throughout your entire farming experience here. So uh, you're also going to be getting deep water ink, which is an extremely valuable uh, component, I guess you could call it, used in spell research. And uh, you'll be able to sell that for, I think, about 25 plat a piece. I could be wrong, though, but that is one of the main things that uh, I always uh, throw up on my trader and sell. And one of the main things, you know, I come here for a lot of the time because you can get at least two or even three of them sometimes for each and every mob that you kill. And that really, really, really piles up. You'll be getting uh, gems that you'll be able to sell in the, uh, to vendors and stuff like that from the sirens and uh, I'm trying to remember the other ones. I'm pretty sure like some of the seahorses and stuff sell them. A lot of those mobs sell stuff like, or uh, not sell stuff like that, but drop stuff like that. And you'll be able to, <clears throat> the, pretty much like uh, the bullthar, the walruses and stuff like that will drop stuff more pretty much related to selling them on the trader but if you kill the sirens and stuff like that you're going to be getting items that you'll be able to sell more on uh to like vendors and stuff like that so that's really what i wanted to say with that and that's something you want to keep in mind focus on the sirens if you want to sell stuff to vendors and uh make money that way but if you also you know don't mind uh selling some stuff on the in the bazaar via the you know your trader I'd focus on killing the walruses, seahorses, uh, swordfish, and stuff like that because you'll get deep water inks. So, another thing is uh, what level and uh, pretty much skill set, I guess you could say, you would need in order to farm at this location. This location is very unfriendly to players level 65 and below. And also, you'll need a couple, maybe I'd recommend at least like 200 AAs before coming to this location. Of course, that's not a requirement, but it's definitely a, a very steep and a very, uh, like, I recommend it a lot, pretty much, is what I'm trying to say. I don't recommend you come here below level 65 or at level 65 without anything worse than a defiant gear. And without anything under maybe like 100 to 200 AAs. This location is very, very hard. And uh, if you come here unprepared, you're just going to get absolutely destroyed by hunting here. So um, pretty much I'd recommend this location too, since I told you what level you can't be here. Uh, level 70 to level 85 probably are the levels I would recommend you be before coming here. Also, um... Even if you are these levels and you've uh, met all of the prerequisites, there's still one area I strongly recommend you avoid, and that's the area I showed towards the end of this video. The reason you want to avoid this area is because there's a uh, raid boss that pretty much spawns down in this area. And uh, let's face it, you're just not going to be able to kill the raid boss pretty much uh, unless you're... You have a lot of A's, like at level 85 uh, on my Ranger, this raid boss, even with 1,200 AAs, still posed a, uh, a threat enough to the point of where, uh, without my Merc, I probably would have died. So that's definitely something, you know, you want to keep in mind and uh, definitely remember. As far as how much money you're going to be making an hour here, I usually make about 20 to 45k an hour depending on the level that you are, how fast you can kill, and whether or not you're going to be selling anything, any of the items you find on your trader. Uh, that hourly estimate factors in uh, selling items on the trader. Now, of course, you know, that will uh, take longer to sell those items on the trader, so you won't be making, you know that money in, in the same hour that you actually farm up the items but if you leave your trader on overnight you're probably going to sell all of the deep water ink that you find and a lot of the cultural items and stuff like that so that's uh, definitely something you want to keep in mind and uh, those are that's the uh, pretty much main information about this location that you want to remember so uh, once again quick little breakdown level uh, 70 to 85 plus is the levels you want to come here uh, and you'll want maybe about 1,000 to 1,200 uh, AAs to be able to like plow through this area like no tomorrow. However, if you want to come here at like level 70 with about like 450 to 500 AAs, you'll probably still make about 20k an hour from farming here. And you can also get AAs at the same time as, uh, you know, as you're farming here and stuff like that. So uh, keep that in mind. And also that isn't to say you won't be able to kill here at a lower level. If you come here between level 60 and 65, you still will be able to kill stuff here and you will still be able to actually make pretty good experience while doing it. I think normally like six or seven kills got me an AA on my druid at like level 67, I think right around there. 
uh, starting getting closer to level 70, this uh, location became pretty crappy XP, but I was still making, you know, pretty decent money from uh, farming here. So, a list of the gems that you're going to be getting that you'll be able to vendor off are as follows. I wrote them all down, all of the ones that I found uh, after, you know, making this video and uh, farming here for at least an additional hour and a half to two, three hours, just because I love this location so much. Um, you're going to be getting blue diamonds, diamonds, flawless diamonds, pristine emeralds, fire emeralds, uh, <clears throat> flawed chrysolite, crushed lava rubies, crushed flame emeralds, flawed sea sapphires, uh, crushed black marbles. You're also going to be getting star rubies, as well as I'm pretty sure crushed star rubies, crushed sea sapphires, black marbles, sapphires, Fire Emeralds, Peridot, Pearl, Coral Crescent, and Flawed Fire Opals. So those are the gems that you're going to be getting from this location. As you can uh, see, there's quite a few that you're going to be finding here, and all of them are going to be extremely valuable at NPCs slash vendors. You'll be able to get a couple hundred plat for each of them, and you're going to be getting a gem probably every three to five kills. So it adds up really fast, and you're going to be getting... A lot of money from farming here trust me on that one uh, now of course as with every farming location you're going to find items that are just complete trash that you're not even going to want to bother looting because they're going to just take up your inventory space and this little next segment is about those items that you're going to be getting so the first items uh, on this list are siren parts they're pretty much uh, meat from the sirens they're just complete trash uh they're used in trade skills i'm pro i'm pretty sure for like illusion potions or something but just get rid of them uh it's really not worth your time to you know carry them around and crap like that seahorse scales also uh used in trade skills but just not really worth your time uh especially if you're looking to turn a quick profit here locks of siren hair used in trade skills i'm pretty sure but also not worth your time to keep ruin of dot 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 now these ruins are uh items that you're gonna find you know you find them in a lot of different places and they uh are like ruins of alteration uh abjuration you know uh ruin of wraith and stuff like that just trash them they take up too much inventory space you're also going to be getting crystalline sulfur which is a, a stackable item that's used in trade skills but just something you want to trash you're also going to be getting spell drops like a uh, portal to great divide and stuff like that just get rid of them you're not going to want to have them taking up your inventory either you're also going to be getting uh rogue poison materials you know stuff like uh shizzer venom uh nig renter venom uh and then you're also going to be like oleander uh leaves and stuff like that just don't even bother looting them they're going to be taking up too much inventory space if you loot them anyway uh also, anything that doesn't stack, you're also going to want to trash. Like, uh, say you get like a pearl necklace or something like that. Just trash it because it doesn't stack with other items. And it's just going to take up space. And we need our space as much as possible while hunting here. You're also going to be getting uh, Bolthar tusk trunks, which uh, you'll want to trash. Complex gold ruins, which much like the other ruins you want to trash. Words of... Uh, much like the ruins and stuff, you want to trash them too. You're also going to be getting both our hides that you want to trash, spinneret fluids, and loams that you want to trash as well. You're also going to want to keep stuff like shabby fine spell scrolls, shabby rough spell scrolls, cultural items like silk and ore. Also, you want to hang on to binding powder, deep water inks, sun shard ore, and sun shard pebbles. Aside from that, you can trash pretty much everything else that wasn't on the list and, uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, like, comment, and subscribe to me for future gaming and EverQuest videos. As always, guys, good luck, happy hunting, and if you'd like to see a written version of this guide, be sure to check my website in the description of the video. I'll see you guys around.